When the rain fell, when the floods came, when the wind blew, I was okay.
we love you, then we're worshiping. Amen? After a while, he loves on us so much that we want to love him back. Amen? Let's love him back. from your spirit. 
I receive your glory. I receive your, your transformation. Yeah. Yeah, I'm believing you, God, for, and then fill in the blanks. I'm believing you, Lord, for, and then fill in the blanks. You know, he actually wants to do it. He actually wants to give you the desire of your heart. Some of you are afraid to ask. And the Lord's like, he put the desire in you to reward it, not to withhold it. Amen? Come on, somebody say, I'm receiving it right now. I receive whatever God wants to do. You know, part, part of the problem is when we fight him, you know, it's like it makes it hard. <laughs> but you just yield, and it's like an open sail that attracts the wind. Come on, who wants to be an open sail? Anybody want to be an open sail? Come on, just say yes. I'm an open sail. Here I am, God. Send the wind. Yeah. Something happens when you're like, send the wind, you know? So you're like, what is he talking about? Well, in the, in the book of Acts, when Pentecost had fully come, it says they were all together and in one place, just like this, and they were in one accord. Here, play a chord for us. Play a chord. A chord is notes that perfectly fit together. And when we're all different notes that fit together, that's a chord. And when we're in one accord, you know, everybody's singing a little different, but it blends together. Angels um, sing actually with the saints of God. Did you know angels are all around us in this place? That angels are all around us? I have to acknowledge that. Because I'm not always aware, but I'm aware right now that there's angels all around this whole place. My goodness. Some of y'all brought them in with you. And some of you are like going to be blessed by the angels because in the in the spirit realm what happens the worship goes and then the angels see the saints worshiping in spirit and in truth and they can't help but flap their wings and fan the flame some people say well how do you know angels have wings well i've seen angels before and some of them have wings and some of them don't and some of them don't have wings but they can still fly but some have wings and what i'm seeing right now is that the angels are fanning the flames of revival and so we just receive that as a word from God that the angels that are assigned to the move of God here and in the Northwest and the nations of the earth, that they're fanning the flames for revival, that they're looking for the people who are on fire for being all in. When you're surrendered, he surrounds. When he surrounds, you get the fire. Amen. And when you're on fire, you become contagious. And in times like this, when it's a little chilly, we need the fire of God. Amen. We need the fire of God. Somebody say, Lord, I need more. More of you, more of your fire, more of your spirit. Come on, I'm hungry. Come on, let me go. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry for a move of your spirit. I don't want to play church. I want you to take over the church. We're the people of God. Amen. He's going to touch you and you'll never be the same again. Some of you just need to know you're approved so you can't be rejected. If you're accepted in the beloved, then rejection is a lie. You don't struggle with rejection. You fail to believe the truth. Amen? Somebody say, I'm not rejected. So rejection, I come out of agreement with you and I say, get out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Somebody's getting set free right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we want to we wanna abide in the shelter of the shadow of the Almighty. We know you wrap your wings around us and hide us in the cleft of the rock. We need you in this world. We need you to move in the government. We need you to show up and show out. And we're asking that every person, God, that you call to do something incredibly powerful, on the earth as it is in heaven, that you would show them their assignment. Show them what they're called to do. And don't let them miss the beauty of being in a place of surrender that you've been surrounded in power. We're asking God that in the nations right now, that you would shake up what needs to be shaken. And so that only unshakable things remain. We want unshakable faith in you. We want to believe the word and apply it every day. We want to know what you're saying. Word of truth, Jesus. We're asking you by the Holy Spirit that you would release such a powerful move of God in our midst tonight that not one would be able to walk out of here without feeling like they're blown away. We want the glory of heaven. Just like Moses, don't send me unless the glory. Oh, 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 oh,
like the heavenly Holy Ghost sponge and you're going to absorb so much glory that when you walk up and somebody's got a demonic issue, they're going to instantly get delivered because you're a Holy Ghost heaven dweller, glory dweller. Yeah. You got what it takes, man. You got what it takes, yeah. Uh, I just see people just soaking up the glory. Come on, this water's alive. You drink this living water, you will thirst no more. You will be eternally satisfied. Ooh. Uh, 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 uh. If you're not afraid of looking a little different, a little strange, you can embrace the move of God. You can embrace the move of God. Yeah, whatever it's supposed to look like. We don't determine that. Yeah. Some people shake it like bacon. Some people are flopping like a fish. Some people get on the ground and get all delivered. And people are like, what's going on here? You know, it's all good. God can do whatever he wants. <laughs> people coming in one way and leaving a totally different way. Yeah, I've just learned to just see. The, you know, that's the Lord. He's doing something right there. Praise the Lord and bless him. Yeah, Lord, I know there's people watching in the nations of the earth that need a touch from heaven. So come on, everybody, let's intercede for the online people. Because there's people watching in their homes, people in their cars. Some people can't go to church. They don't have freedom to assemble in certain countries. So they're watching us. Yeah, yeah, let's pray for them. Jesus. <laughs> you can, if you're watching, just stretch your hand out toward the screen. We're going to all pray for you right now. You're going to get blasted and blessed. And Jesus is going to show up right there where you are. We release the glory of heaven. We release the power of the Holy Spirit. We release the anointing that breaks the yoke. The yoke is the bondage to sin. We just say it's the one-step program. It's the only program that works. Confess your sin. And He's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I declare you cleansed. I declare your chains are broken. I declare this is the first day of the rest of your life. And you will wake up so satisfied by the Lord Himself who's upon you now. And I release the Spirit of the Lord into the nations for a move of God. Let every government that doesn't agree with the government of the kingdom crumble and become sand. Let every mountain, every hill that's in the way of the children of God be level plains. And Lord, would you build up those who you are bringing up out of the secret place even now. You're bringing them up out of intimacy. They're receiving the golden oil of heaven. And they're going to walk with the new wine and the power of the Holy Spirit to accomplish your will on earth as it is in heaven. Somebody say, yes, Lord. It's okay to laugh in church. I just, some of y'all need permission. You've been in some religious circles and the Lord wants you to know it's okay to have fun. You're a church. It's okay. This is a church that's free. And we want to be free in the house of the Lord. You want to dance. You can jump. You can run. You can kneel. You can weep. You can laugh. Whatever you want to do. Praise God. Be free. <laughs>
Did you drive or fly? They flew here to be with us. 
us from Colorado. Come on, give him a hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we just honor you and bless you. I don't want to sick of you out, but y'all are getting healed tonight. It's going to be good. We're such a precious family. What an amazing family. You guys are doing a good job as parents. God's, he's taking you to the next level, sir. When he came in, I saw neck pain. And I asked him if he had an issue with his neck. And he says, yeah. And so we got to pray for his neck. And it was a word of knowledge. And now the Lord's healing his neck. And just being in the presence of God like this. If you get a word of knowledge, somebody's getting healed. If the word of knowledge is right, the Lord doesn't reveal problems he's not going to solve. If you know that foundational truth, he'll pray and believe. And when you pray and believe, you're just partnering with what he already wants to do. And is your neck actually feeling better? Yeah. It is. He said his neck's feeling. Is it all the way better or is it just a little better? It's better. Okay. Well, it is better, but it's not all the way. Does anybody think God's just going to do it halfway? No. We're not at the halfway, halfway God house? Okay, here we go. Jesus, we just come in. Come on, just stretch your hand over to this uh, fine gentleman. The Lord's increasing the territory. I, I saw that the Lord was increasing the territory. He's going to buy the property next door. First thing I saw with this family coming in the door was that they, they, God was going to increase their land. And they had it on their heart to, to purchase the land next door, which, of course, I didn't know. I just met him for the first time. And now God's setting it up for them to be able to buy the land next door. So we released that property, paid in full by Jesus himself. And they might have to give up a few things in order for it to happen, but it's going to take place and you will be blessed. God's going to do something. You just get rid of things you don't need. Uh, clear out the garage. Get rid of some stuff you've held on to for a while. And God's going to actually do it. He's going to pay for it. He's going to be debt free. In Jesus' name, we declare it. We decree it. We believe it. And Lord, thank you for healing this neck 100%. I command that neck to be healed in Jesus' name. Angels, go. Let's lift the burden by faith. Lord, every yoke, every weight, every burden, and even fear around false responsibility, lift off this mighty man. And Lord, bless his heart. In Jesus' name. Bless his heart. We release the Father's blessing over you. I just feel like God's saying you're not condemned. And so you never have to be under guilt or shame or be hard on yourself. Because the Lord is so gracious and kind. And he's so in love with you. He just loves you, man. He smiles. You know, when you're getting it done and you work hard. And I feel like God's saying, I just, I'm so proud of you as your father. I'm so proud of you as your father. And I'm doing a deep work inside you. And there's so many things you've been believing for. God wants to bring them to pass. Every single one of the promises will come to pass. So I just command your neck to be fully healed right now. All pain to get out. No more pain in Jesus' name. And there's a knee being healed as well. And we just release the healing over the knee in Jesus' name. Uh, one of the girls, do you have, who has the knee issue? My son. That's your son. Okay, what's his name? Austin. And he's not here right now. Okay. Yes, yeah, so Lord, we just thank you for Austin's knee. We just thank you, God, that you're healing his knee right now. Yeah, Jehovah's knee, he's going after him right now. Shock God right my side. We just command that knee to be healed in Jesus' name. We command that knee to be healed. We need the Lord, and he loves to fix knees. Because sometimes we've got to kneel before him. And he wants the knees to be new. And so in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for making all things new. And that nothing shall be impossible for those who believe. And Lord, we just thank you when two or more gather and ask in your name, the name of Jesus, that it shall be done. So thank you in the name of Yeshua. Ha! We just command the knee to be healed. We command the cells, joints, tendons, and muscles in every person's body to be aligned with the Spirit of the Lord and the Word of Truth. That by my stripes you are healed. That's Jesus' word. By my stripes you are healed. So you can say, by His stripes. I am whole right now. I receive it. Say, I am whole by the stripes of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Something powerful happens when you can say that. By his stripes, I am healed. It doesn't say I will be. It doesn't say maybe. It's just, nope, I am. And now I receive that. And now I believe that. And when the enemy comes and tries to put something on you, you can laugh and just go, nope, I'm healed. And when you watch the news, and it's fake news most of it, but when you watch the news and you hear people and there's a toll and there's a pole and there's a barrier, and the Lord's like, no, there's no shadow of turning. I'm the healer who healed. Every sickness, every disease is canceled. COVID's canceled. It's not coming around. Leprosy's gone. You don't even hear about it. 
Yeah, as long as you're not eating bat guano, you shall not be sick in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, say yes, Lord. Don't eat bat guano. Nobody goes and licks the tables at the Wuhan lab. Amen? No licking the tables. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> so, some of y'all just, you just need a little, little comedy, a little humor. <laughs> I was just seeing, I was seeing people going, you know, um, you know, when you listen to fake news about stuff, you know, it's kind of like licking the table. You know? Don't listen to fake news. Listen to the good news. The gospel's way better. We got the word of the Lord. There's nothing better than the word of the Lord. If it's not in here, just throw it out. I mean, unless God speaks to you personally, that's, that's important. Okay, let's look at some scripture. And uh, we'll, we'll, do, we'll take up an offering in a little bit, but let me get some, some word. Let me get some word. <laughs> okay, John 1, guys. If you could put that up on the screen, John 1. I always like to look at the Amplified in case there's some nuggets. John 1.14. If you have your Bibles, take a look at John 1.14. If you're joining us online, uh, feel free to grab your, your Bible. Uh, and maybe even some notes. You might want to take some notes and, and get a pen and a paper. You never know when you might hear something brilliant. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to say. And so, but I know Christ is in me as the Holy Lord. And I know where my help comes from. And I know that He's full of wisdom yeah. and His Spirit of truth. Amen. So if something good gets said, it's probably Him. And if it's, you know, whatever. But again, you, know, you might want to write down, if He says something through me, praise God, you might want to write it down to remember it. Because I don't remember most of the stuff I say, but sometimes I marvel at what I say because I know there's no way I could have known that. And so then it makes me happy. And so John 1, 14. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Wasn't that? That was great worship. Amen. Come on. Wasn't that good? Where's Ellie? Where's Ellie? Ellie's that was back here. Ellie, we love you. John, well done. That was just beautiful. That was just really nice. Just the presence of God is, is really on them. And, Praise God for that. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you for uh, those of you who've been helping and volunteering. We honor you and we bless you. And we're super grateful. Where's Joan? Where's Joan? Joan, there you are. She's all bundled up. And she thinks it's going to snow in the building. <laughs> when she walked in. It was like, ooh, what's going on in here? I should have brought more clothes. Um, anyway, you guys, you guys are okay? I know it's starting to warm up. I mean, the heavens are releasing the fire of God. Okay, here we go. John 1, 14, plus we turned on the heater. Just, just a little slow going. Yeah, is that door open? No, it's not. Okay, the window's shut. Okay. Alright, let's look at this. And the Word, somebody say Christ, Christ. became flesh, human, and tabernacled. I love this. We've been tabernacled. This is fixed His tent of flesh and lived a while among us, and we actually saw His glory. His honor, His majesty. When you hear the word glory, you can think of His majesty. Remember we used to sing, How majestic is the Lord of lords? Think about this though. Is the majesty of the Lord is expressed in the, in the Shekinah glory of God. Or the, some people call it the shock and awe. Yeah, when, when I experienced it, I was shocked and in awe. Uh, it was the shock and awe. I like how they say shock and awe. Some people say Shekinah. The, the Shekinah people argue that it's Shekinah, and the Shekinah people say, no, it's Shekinah. Sounds like China. Okay, we need to pray for them. All right, here we go. His majesty. Okay, such glory, <laughs> such glory as an only begotten son receives from his father, full of grace, favor, loving kindness, and truth. Somebody say, full of grace. Full of, grace. Full of truth. If you have the Spirit of the Lord in you, you are full of grace. Because Jesus is grace. Remember, the law was given through Moses. Grace came through Jesus. So Jesus is grace. And Jesus is amazing. Do you guys know how amazing He is? Like when He loves you, He loves you completely unconditionally. You know why? Because the Father loves us unconditionally. It's so important to remind yourself how loved you are. Because your earthly father might have blown it. You might have suffered some struggles and some trials and some, uh, you know, hurt. But here's the thing is the father has open arms towards his kids. And he's like, oh, just come up here and just climb on daddy's lap. And he's not like Santa, but he does see you when you're sleeping and know when you're awake or if you've been bad or good. And he's like, what sin? Right? He's so gracious and kind. He's like, here, just come hang out with me. Let me just hold you for a while, son. Let me just help you for, for a little bit here, daughter. Just know I'm never leaving. I'm never going to forsake you. You'll never be alone. 
Amen? Mm -hmm. Allow yourself to receive the love of the Father. Because it's amazing. Can you put your hand on your heart? Just say, Father, Father help my heart, help my heart to, receive to receive your love. Your love. I receive it now. Receive by, it. Faith, by faith, wash over me wash and help me be completely satisfied and settled in your rest. Thank you that I'm your righteousness. So I have nothing to prove. No more delays. Because I'm stepping into my promise. Because I'm stepping into my promise. Do it only you can. I say yes. Yes, Lord. Yeah, when you say yes to him, it's something powerful happens. Here I am, Lord, send me. Right? Yes, Lord, yes. We used to sing that song. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Remember? And it's a little annoying. I'm not going to lie. It's a little corny. But it, it was still, there was something about it, right? Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I wish they'd make a better song. Maybe Ellie can write one. Or John. You can write a song. We call it Yes, Lord, but it won't be cheesy. It'll be really good. Amen? Yes, Lord. Okay, here we go. Next scripture. Uh, let's look at this. 2 Chronicles 4, 6. 2 Chronicles 4, 6. Let's take a look. <laughs> Second Chronicles. I'm believing in faith. 4-6. Okay. It's almost there. There it is. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. He made also ten lavers in which to wash and put five on the right south side and five on the left, the north side. Uh, such things as they offered for the burnt offerings, wash them. That's not about the glory. Uh, okay, next one. Hebrews 1, 3. Hebrews 1, 3. I'm so glad we made coffee. Hebrews 1, 3. In the Northwest, some people have to have their coffee. And people in Arizona don't understand it. <laughs> Hebrews 1, 3. I didn't even drink coffee until I moved back here. And now, now I like it. And I like putting stuff in it too. I don't think it's so good putting all that stuff in there. You know, you put the sugars and all the creamers. And some of those fake creamers, they're just not even, they're not even healthy. Like, I'm not going to lie. They're, they're good. Right? They're good. I like hazelnut creamer. Amen? Okay. <laughs> the fake stuff lasts longer. I mean, I figured that out. Fake, fake stuff lasts longer. If you get the real cream, it goes bad quick. So you drink more of it, and you can fatten up for the winter. And then move to Arizona. Okay, here we go. He is the sole expression. Okay, look at this. He's the sole expression of the glory of God, the light being, the outraying or radiance of the divine, and He is the perfect imprint and the very image of God's nature, upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by His mighty word of power. Somebody say the word of power. The word of power. Is in me. Yeah, because Jesus is the word and He's in you by the Holy Ghost. Look what it says. When He had, by offering Himself, accomplished our cleansing of sin. That's how you know you've been cleansed. Some people don't believe it. If you fall in the mud... Take a shower in the glory of His righteousness so you won't slip on anything unholy. Look at this. He said, when He had offered Himself, accomplished our cleansing of sins and radiance of guilt. Oh, riddance. Riddance. Yeah, He's radiant. But we've been <laughs> ridden <laughs> of any guilt, shame, or condemnation. He sat down at the right hand of the divine majesty on high. That's a good word. That's a good scripture. Ephesians 3.16. Let's look at that one. This is some good meat Amen. for your spirit. Amen. We need to feed our spirit. Hopefully you're not just eating one meal a week. You, you can eat every day. Eat the word every day. Amen. Hebrews 1.3. Somebody's going to get blessed tonight. I, I, can, I can just feel it. Yeah. A bunch of you need, to, be, uh, a bunch of you need to, to understand how much you're loved. I think some of you just need to tell yourself. I am so loved. By God. And I love God. Right? You, you need to let Him know too. One of the ways I learned to fill up on the love of God is just to love on God. Amen. And if I'm having a hard time loving on the one who first loved me, and that there's no greater love than this, than he that would lay his life down 
And he laid his life, willingly gave himself over to death, to conquer sickness, disease, death, hell, and the grave. So he does this so that we could not just get out of, out of hell, right? The way to sin and death and the gift of God's eternal life. No, but he wanted us to be with him in the glory. Amen? Somebody say, I'm with him in the glory. Yeah. Okay, so this scripture, look at this one, Ephesians 3. May he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. He's indwelling. Now look, at you can even put this into a prophetic message by just saying, look at this. He is granting me out of the riches of the treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with his mighty power in my, come on, put it in the first person, in my, can you do it? Ready? Uh, where was I? Okay. Okay. Mighty power in my inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling in me. Come on, say in me, in my innermost being, and it's affecting my personality. It is affecting your personality. Every That's time true. that you get in the presence of God, it starts to change the way you think. Yes. You start to increase in awareness of Him. Yes. And as you're increasing in awareness of Him, you become consumed with the brilliance of His majesty. Yes, oh, that was a good word right there. Yes. You're becoming, now we turn it into a prophetic word. You are becoming consumed by the brilliance of His <laughs> majesty. Yeah, I feel the glory on that right there. I want to say it again. You're becoming consumed by the brilliance of His majesty. Wow, when you walk into places that are dark and you're full of the light, my goodness, all the darkness just, whoop, it's just canceled. The effect darkness, people can't see in darkness. They don't know what they're doing. So don't judge them, just shine. Show up and shine. Stop looking for what's wrong with people. It's not your job. You're not meant to play Holy Ghost. You're meant to be filled with Holy Ghost and let the Spirit begin to help you to see what the Father sees and He sees something that you can love. Amen? If you're judging to condemn, you might have to look at, do you feel condemned yourself? See, the enemy tries to get us to sin. And then when we do, he tries to convince us it was our idea, and now we've disqualified ourselves. And the truth is, you've been pre-selected and pre-qualified. And he's given you a whole new nature. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me to die is to gain. Lose your life, and you find it. Find your life, hold on to it, and you lose it. He's saying to live, you got to give your life away. Every day you can just say, Lord, I'm not mine, I'm yours. I gave my life to you. Now you have your way in me. And it's so much free, freer because you don't have to try to dictate and, and orchestrate, and manipulate or, or control. You just, there's none of that in him. And you have such a satisfaction being surrendered in the Father's love. It's just amazing. Okay, you receiving this? Okay, what's the next scripture? That was Ephesians 3. Psalm 113. Let's look at Psalms. I love the Psalms. When I was young, I called it the Psalms. It sounded like lit bombs. The Psalms are right, right here. Okay, let's look at the Psalms. 113.4. Ha, 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 ha. Y'all having fun in church? Okay. Psalm 113.4. This is the Holy Scripture. Don't laugh. Okay. <laughs> Psalms. We got it? Psalms 113. Four. Here it is. The Lord is high above all nations and His glory above the heavens. There's no name higher than the name of Jesus. If you want to honor the Father, you must honor the Son. You can walk around and just go, Jesus, it honors the Father. You can watch what people do. You know, you can tell where somebody's at by their reaction to that name. If you say all kinds of other names, like you don't get a reaction. If you go, Muhammad, nobody freaks out. They just probably think you're Muslim. If you, if you say, Buddha, some people just might think you eat too much. I don't know. But Jesus is the only one who died for you. 
Muhammad didn't die for you. Amen. Buddha didn't die for you. He might have tried to eat baby. I don't know how he got so big. But Jesus says, listen, I'm the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Right? And he's like, look it, I'm right here, high above all of this nonsense in the earth. I've already solved all the problems right up here. And by the way, I call you my child and I've seated you with me up here. Amen? You are above and not beneath. With the head and not the tail. No longer tossed to and fro down here in the soul realm. But you're up here with him, seated in high above. And, and he's giving us the victory right now. He has paid for the victory. He's given us the keys to his kingdom. That's a powerful scripture. The Lord is high above all the nations. And his glory above the heavens. Let's look at Exodus. This is interesting. Exodus 33. Take a look, guys. Exodus 33 in chapter, in verse 18. Exodus 33, 18 to 23. 33, 18 to 23. Look at this. Oh. And Moses said, I beseech you, show me your glory. Can you ask God for that right now? Because if, if, if this is Old Testament, and we're in greater glory now because we're in the new covenant. This is after the work of the cross. We should be experiencing way more glory than Moses. But even Moses in this situation, don't send me unless your glory goes with me. Unless your presence be upon me, I don't want to go in there. Why? Because he valued the presence of God. He honored the presence of God. Most churches are built on performance. 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 And there's a performance mentality that leads to you. Mm. It leads to a whole lot of fleshy nonsense is what it. If people ever performed good enough. To meet the grave, then they feel like they're just chopped liver or they're no good. And the truth is, is you can't become something like being righteous by your own good works. It doesn't work that way. You are righteous because Jesus said you're righteous, not because you did a bunch of righteous things. Amen? You are not chosen based on your perfect performance. You are chosen based on sonship. He's like, I love you. I see you. I call you my name. He knows right what he's doing with every single one of you. And some of you need to know that you're winning. You're actually winning. Y'all came to church. I know you're winning. You don't, you don't lose by seeking the Lord. You don't come to the house of the Lord as a, as a loser. You come to the house of the Lord as a winner. Because a winner will pursue God and not forsake the assembly. Some are in the habit of forsaking the assembly, but it's disobedient because the Bible says don't forsake the assembly together as some are in the habit of doing. And so well done. You all came to church and I know you're going to bring friends with you when you show up again and it's going to be glorious. And many people are getting set free by just being in the place where God's allowed to move. And there are places where you can see that God's moving and there's places where they don't even say Holy Spirit. And they sure are going to talk about the glory or angels. Why? Because they don't want to talk about what you can't see. Because then all the intellectual tigers will not come. I'm just being real. This is what happens. Because if we talk about something that makes people uncomfortable, which is probably half the scripture, right? But it's meant to, it's meant to stir us up and, and churn some things and get us set free of some ideas and mindsets. And, and so the scripture is, is bringing us into becoming more developed like Christ. And there's big chunks of scripture that are not being talked about because it's like, well, we better not talk about that because you can't see that. And, you know, the, the people who are coming in that don't understand that, they're just not at that level. You know, let's be sensitive of that. And the Lord's like, what? Set him free. What are you talking about? We're not supposed to be seeker sensitive and walk water down the message. Have you ever put a bunch of water in your milk? I mean, eat meat. God wants to take you from milk to meat. Amen. Eat meat. You'll, you won't have to eat as often. You just eat some meat. You know, some people just want to... Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I'm sorry. I'm a little, I'm a little funny. Okay, so here we go. Oh, did I already read this? I'm just... Oh, my goodness. Uh, sometimes I crack myself up. Uh, did we read that one? Not yet. Okay, here we go. 
All right, let's read it. And God said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. Saying this to Moses this is amazing. And I will make all my goodness pass before you. I don't know if you can handle all that. And I will proclaim my name, the Lord, before you. <laughs> For I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy and loving kindness on whom I will show mercy and loving kindness. He's saying, hey, I'm God, and I'm going to do whatever I want, and I don't need your permission. Is that okay? Right? Don't you ever wonder, like, does, does God really need our permission to be God? And sometimes, because He made our brain, sometimes we get really smart. And maybe we read a lot, and we get a doctorate, or we get all these, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with that, good profit. But but I'm just saying, like, the, the plan uh, for the born-again believing believer that follows Christ is that we would recognize who He is, first off. That we don't know more than the one who made our brain. And there's a bunch of people that are super smart, and they have power on the earth, that think that they know more than the one who made their brain. So you can pray for them. To have a God encounter. Because when the glory of God comes upon them, they might start shaking like bacon in the shop and up. Alright, here we go. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh yeah. But he said, I love this. You cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That's amazing. Wow. Okay. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place beside me, and you shall stand. Upon the rock. Now remember, Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the rock. He's the foundation. Remember, he's the, the chief cornerstone. The builders, that's those who were supposed to be building with him, like the Sadducees and the Pharisees. They were very Sadducee and they were not Pharisee. And, and here it is. That, that they're, they're recognizing. So people read this and they're like, oh my goodness. So the glory of God's a pretty big deal in the Bible. And so we should be we should be seeking to gather in places that honor the presence. Because anything else, to me, is a waste of time. I've been to some empty meetings, even a big show, but there's no glory. People laugh and they, other people look at them like, what are they doing? Why are they laughing? What's so funny? Is there something wrong with them? And you're experiencing a, a life-changing supernatural encounter. And they don't even perceive it. Instead, they're looking at outward appearances like, you know, the Shekinah glory is amazing. Okay. <laughs> and while my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock. Notice it doesn't say you're going to have to put yourself in position. It says, I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. You know, there's, there's I've been... In situations where the glory of God was so strong that I couldn't stand up. Does anybody relate to that? Yeah. And it's a good thing. I don't know if you've ever experienced where the presence of God is so thick and so tangible. The glory of God is pouring out. And all of a sudden you're just like, oh my goodness, like Jesus is here. Right? I mean, I can tell you a story, just a quick story about the glory. The glory tells a story. And my story is from the glory. I was in a meeting one night, and I remember in this meeting, looking over in the doorway, and I saw Jesus. And I saw Jesus. Now, in the, in the Word we just read, no one seen God, right? Because you wouldn't be able to live if, and see His face. He had to cover His face, so Moses didn't see His face, and He passed by. So somebody would say, well, yeah, but the Lord, but the Bible says, you know, nobody sees and lives. Well, I saw Jesus, okay? I saw Jesus. Now, this is one of those things It seems like a contradiction. I didn't see Jesus like I'm seeing one of you. I saw Jesus in the spirit as a spiritual being, right? We're spirit beings. Our spirit joined with his spirit, we become supernatural. And so I'm looking and in the spirit, I saw Jesus very clearly and he was standing in the doorway. And I wasn't there going to say anything about it because if somebody else doesn't see it, they're going to think I'm weird. And I was trying to avoid that, so I didn't say anything. And then I saw Jesus, he came up like this with his arms crossed, like this, and he steps into the doorway, I can see him clear, and he looks at me, and he looks around the room, and he looks back at me, and he smiles, knowing that he revealed himself that I would be able to see him. And then he backed one step back like this, and I could no longer see him. 
and I was completely undone. We're just in a Bible study in Gig, Gig Harbor. We're just hanging out. It's a small group of us, and I see Jesus, and I'm undone, okay? I'm feeling the glory of God just telling me the story, which I don't often tell stories like this because there's always going to be those people that are like, what is he talking about? Okay, well, this is something that hopefully you can grab a hold of the, the idea that this is possible for you because I'm telling a testimony about what happened and G, the testimony of Jesus is as the spirit of prophecy. So it is prophesying that this is available to those who will have faith and grab on to the message being yeah. revealed now. And so I see Jesus. So I walk over to the doorway and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I'm just going to go see if he's still in. Now I know he lives in us by the spirit. I know he lives in us and it's amazing. Okay, we could be supercharged and have super incredible interaction with the Lord. And it's amazing. It's fresh. It's powerful. Somebody yells out, do you go to see Jesus? I'm like, it was my friend Greg. I go, I go, I saw him. Did you, did you see him? Now I don't tell him what I see because I want to see what he sees and if it makes sense in light of what I saw. Yeah. So you, you don't always have to tell all you know, but know all you tell. And so if somebody's like, they're encountering something, you're trying to test what you're experiencing, ask them what they're experiencing. Be more interested than interesting. Yeah. Asking questions is a great way to learn and grow. I, I find as I mature a little bit more, that I actually enjoy listening to the people more than I enjoy talking. In fact, I don't always feel like even doing this, but the Spirit of the Lord just jumps on me, usually right in the worship, and I get all excited to say whatever He's going to say, and I usually don't know what it is going to be. So I'm excited to hear the message too. <laughs> So anyway, I looked over and I, I'm like, oh my goodness, what do you see? What do you see? And he's like, I saw Jesus. He just, he just walked up into the doorway right there. And he, he looked over this way. And he looked around the room. And then he looked back over across this way. And he had his hands like this. And then he just smiled. And then he backed up. I'm like, what? <laughs> I was like a little freaked out. I'm not going to lie. So now I'm thinking, okay, that's real. Now I can't keep myself from wanting to go over by Jesus because he's Jesus. He's the king. I'm just like, I go over to the doorway like this and I go, Jesus, Jesus, are you still here? And I felt a brush on my arm. And instantly, I went from upright to completely flat on my face. And I was like, <laughs> I couldn't move. I was frozen. On the floor, and I didn't fall. Yeah. Now explain that to me. I don't know. All I know is I was upright, uh -huh. and when I saw Jesus, I pursued. I felt so much fire on my body. Oh, it's like I wasn't really made to fully understand what I was about to experience. But when I felt the brush, wow. I was like, Psh. without falling, I went from. Psh. I was uh, utterly, uh, utterly speechless. I was. I was speechless. That's rare. Uh, he made me to say some things, but I was on the ground and I couldn't talk. I couldn't talk. The glory was so strong. And I felt the physical whoosh, brush. And then, whoosh, and I got up after who knows how long. And there were still people there. <laughs> and I'm like, did anybody see that? You do. You were just like standing there, and all of a sudden you were <laughs> on the ground. That was weird. I go, it was glorious, and I shared with them what I shared with you. And you know what I realized? There are encounters that God wants to release to the body of Christ. If you don't know this stuff happens, then you won't have any expectation. To see something like this for yourself. I could tell you story after story about the glory. My goodness. He took me all through heaven. He told me to go up on the mountain like Moses. He said, go up on the mountain and come away with me. He wanted me to get away from the noise. The phone ringing all the time and the demands of people and just come away with him. And I went up there on the mountain. He said, make a list, Nathan, of every promise that I've ever made you in my scripture and to you personally. And I said, wow, that's, that's a lot of promises. And I started going through, writing down the promises that I could recall. 
And the Spirit of God helped me. And I had page after page just so filled with gratitude as I was remembering all the promises. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I love you more than you were made to fully grasp. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man those things that I've prepared for you, beloved. I'm just like getting so full of heaven and full of the glory and the fire of God. And all of a sudden, whoop, I'm on a mountaintop. Well, I was in my vehicle, and now I'm on a mountaintop. What in the heck is going on right here? And I didn't know. I didn't know what happened. In the body, out of the body, I do not know. I was on a mountaintop in the spirit. And here I am on the mountain, and I see Jesus, and he grabs my hand, and he says, are you ready for this? And I don't even know what he's talking about. Am I ready for what? And my spirit just responded, yes. And I looked down, and eagle feathers started growing out of my arms. And I'm holding his hand, and in a little while, it wasn't his hand anymore. It was wingtip to wingtip. And our wingtips were gripping each other. And I'm like, my goodness. And I'm hearing the Spirit of the Lord yeah. say, And they shall mount up on wings as eagles. And they shall walk and not faint and run and not grow weary. And he said, Are you ready? And I said, Yes, again. And he said, Let's go. And we came off the top of a mountain. And we started to fly. And I was flying, and we were flying east, and we flew over the water, and we ended up like over Syria, and a war broke out, and I'm just like, what is this? And, and, and I said, what do we do, Jesus? And he said, just release my peace over the war, and I'll settle the dispute. I'm like, oh my goodness, he's letting me participate in declaring and decreeing the cancellation of a war that could literally stop who knows how many people from perishing. And I'm thinking, this is incredible. Like, I get to do this with you? Oh my goodness. I'm just like, I release the peace of God right now in the war. And I see that bombs are going off and missiles are flying back and forth. And it's really dark. The cloud's dark. And I see the bombs are going off and flashes of light. And all of a sudden, just boom, it stops. Just like that. And we shot, shot straight up through this tunnel of, of clouds and then stars up outside of the galaxy. And I'm like, whoa. I'm literally doing this. If you would have been there and you were watching in the natural, you'd have thought, oh, that, done, that guy just lost his mind. You're so good enough. I mean, I was like, yeah, whoa. Flying, man. No wonder he took me up in the mountains. He didn't want anybody to see it. He'd be like, who? What's Pastor? I don't know what's going on. He doesn't seem like he's all there. But I was just like, <laughs> flying <laughs> with Jesus through the stars, tunnel of stars. Just, they're going by. <laughs> and just, whoo, comes up. Oh, we're up there in heaven and there's clouds like compressed, like marble compressed clouds. And I see the gate, I see the gates of heaven. I see this big gold knob, big solid gold knob like this. And a big giant pearl gate. It's one pearl. It's not a whole bunch of pearls smashed together, but just one giant pearl. It looked like there was two and there were gates. And then I went to touch the big giant solid gold knob and before I could even reach it with my hand, it just opened and all these people are celebrating the arrival. And I'm like, wow. Amazing. Started talking to people and it was like everybody just knew everybody's thoughts and they were all good. They were all pure. They were amazing. And wow. nobody was saying anything bad. It was all good. And they were talking without having to use words. <laughs> Nobody's lips moving. Just everybody know, just talking, communicating like just, oh, oh, mm -hmm. And just we just know each other's thoughts. It was amazing. It was all good too. Nobody's like, oh man, that does not work. Those shoes are just off. Oh man. Her hair, oh, she with the curve. It wasn't like that. So you see what I'm saying? So anyway, I realized the Lord's giving me a glimpse of heaven. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about when he took me through hell. Because it was real. It was terrible. Weeping and dungeons and gnashing of teeth and tears and crying. And I can even see people's jaws clean. It was, it was really bad. In fact, I was angry that God showed me that. And I said, why did you show me that? And he got right in my face. He said, because I desire none perish. And I 
felt the heart of God that people are perishing, not because he's putting them in hell, but because they're choosing hell for themselves by saying no to God who wants to show them hell. It changed my life. So heaven's real. And you don't have to wait to die to go there. You can live in that place every day. He taught us to pray on earth as it is in heaven. Say, I want my glory to be so strong on your surrender that I can saturate you in the fresh oil of heaven and I can turn you loose on a world that desperately needs to know that I live. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, I mean, there's so much scripture and I've got all these scriptures and you can read them all you want, but if you don't know the secrets of the glory, you could miss what Jesus actually paid for when he conquered sickness, disease, death, hell, and the grave. He became your sin. You're no longer a sin saved by grace. You are a saint as the righteousness of God. And you were made to know that and not forget it. You were loved. He couldn't be more loved. You, nothing you could do would get him to love you more. And nothing that you could do would get him to love you less. You're just loved by the Father. You are loved by the Son. You are loved by the Holy Spirit. And you can live in the glory. And you know what I do to, to get into the glory? Is I just start to worship the Lord. I start praising. I don't need words on the screen. I've learned just to go, oh, I love you, Jesus. I oh, bless you, God. What do you want to say? Is there anything you want to say? What would you have me to do? Is there something you'd like me to do? Yeah, call so-and-so. And I've just learned those little promptings of the Holy Spirit to do different things during the day. I'm letting him in. And I'm allowing him to move as a vessel that doesn't want what he wants. I don't want what I want because I've learned it's so much better to desire what he wants. And then because I want to do what he wants, he empowers me to hear. Some people don't hear because they don't really surrender. Like, oh Lord, what would you have me to do? I'm not doing that. What? No, here I am. But send somebody else. <laughs> I mean, sometimes we're like that. It's like, oh, go where? Do you want me to go where? No, 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 I'm not going there. You must have been talking about somebody else. But if you're surrendered, you can't wait to be instructed and your ears will actually be open and tentative. Practice the presence and practice living in the, in the glory. And one of the things you can do as well entering the glory is just, you know, turn off the distractions. Sometimes we get so busy. The busyness, we think we're making progress. Busyness is not progress. Time with God is progress. Deepening your relational connection with God is the key factor to being somebody who dwells in the shadow or the shelter, the secret place of the Most High. Jesus is saying, hey, I'm going to hide you in the cleft of my rock. I'm going to wrap my wing around. You're going to be protected and I'm going to prepare you. And you're going to be empowered by my spirit. And if you want more of him, just give over more of yourself. Every time you heal, he gets excited. You can read the scripture, feed your spirit, of course. Pray in tongues, yes. And if you don't pray in tongues, that's okay. You can receive the gift of tongues tonight. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We don't do it. God does it by the Spirit. Amen. He's not going to give you a gift you don't want. The Bible says earnestly desire, covet, pursue the greater gifts. What are the greater gifts? The ones that edify the most, according to the Scripture. Prophecy. I wish you all would prophesy. Why? Because it's a good thing to prophesy. Some of y'all need to not prophesy until you get your soul healed or you start speaking wrong things. You know, if your soul's messed up because you've been hurt, forgive and help God uh, help God to do a work in you by just saying, you know what, I forgive that. And when the enemy brings up your past, start reminding him of his future. And just be done with it. Like, no, I'm not believing that voice, that lie. I believe what God says. He says this about me. Yeah. And you don't just go around trying to prove that you're worth it and, you know, try to pray for everybody. Get yourself healed up first. And don't ever touch people unless you ask permission. And if they don't want you to touch them, don't feel rejected. Just They just don't maybe know you, right? Or your intention. Why do you want to pray for me? Right? So, you know, if, if somebody asks, can I pray for you? It's totally okay to say, well, I prefer you not touch me, but feel free to pray for me. If somebody prophesies something like, oh yeah, this is going wrong, and now this, and you've been thinking that, and it's all, that sounds a lot like condemnation. You just go, okay, well, I don't receive it. I don't, I don't receive that either. I don't receive that either. I know you're just practicing, but how about this? Realize how much God loves you first, and then prophesy. But until you know that, don't say a word. 
Because it's coming out like condemnation and shame and guilt and reminding me of something I didn't do right or I thought wrong. And I'm over that now. That's not who I am. I'm a new creation and you are too. He loves you. And just speak truth into them. They probably need to know. It. Amen. And, you know, just know that you set the pace for how you respond and react to people around you. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You've got what it takes. So what's your favorite scripture? On the glory. Come on, call it out if you have a favorite scripture and you came with one. Just call it out. You can type it in also if you have a favorite scripture on the glory. Now, then we're going to continue this tomorrow morning. And it's going to be incredible. Uh, but go ahead. Does anybody have a scripture that's about the glory? If you don't, that's okay. I put out a book. Yeah. 1 Samuel 15, 29. What's it say? Yeah, and, and he's not a God that he can lie. If he said it, he's going to do it. Amen? If some of you have received promises from the Lord, and after a while you start thinking, maybe that's not the Lord. But listen, you're still alive. I believe every promise that you've received from the Lord shall come to pass. If somebody gave you a word and you like it, just receive it. If they give you a word and you don't like it, you get to eat the meat and spit out the bones. You don't have to receive yeah. just everything you get. If somebody says, well, you're this and you think that way and it's not even true... Just go out, reject that, and renounce it. And thanks for trying. Keep going. Uh, you know, I encourage your faith. Yeah, you don't have to receive it, but don't come into agreement with the word that's coming out of guilt or shame or condemnation or judgment to condemn. Instead, receive the good and encourage the people who are working on it and mm -hmm. encourage them that if the spirit of prophecy, we're supposed to prophesy, right? It's for edification, to build up, to lift up, to encourage, to exhort. And sometimes it's necessary to bring reproof, but it should be truth in love, or it's better not said. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So you truth in love, everybody. You just, oh man, God loves you. And I used to do the sandwich approach. I'd say to my wife, she kind of caught on after a while. I'd say, honey, I just love you. You're so great. She'd go, okay, what I do? Yeah. I was trying the sandwich approach. Like, well, you know, when you do this, and it really bothers me, and you do this, and, and that, and I wish you'd just not do that, and then this, but you're really good at this. So I'm throwing a whole bunch of criticism and I'm sandwiching in a couple little tidbits of encouragement and it just wasn't working. So I just started going, okay, what's my heart? Is it to fix her for my benefit or is it to help her to receive the very thing that she needs, right? If she's saying, well, did you notice? And I'm like, what? I just came in the door. Did I notice what? Well, you know, I've learned, I look around the house for any minor change and I'm going to talk about it. Oh, wow, you've cleaned in here. Well, yeah, you saw it. And, and I walked walk through and I'm like, Lord, help me what you do. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned, it? I've learned. I want to recognize and encourage any behavior that was positive. And we need to do this with the kids too. Instead of criticizing what they're doing wrong, how about talking about what they're doing right? You know? Amen. And don't speak into them what you don't want them to become. If you, if they're messy, you don't say, oh, you're such a slob. You clean your room or you're not getting your phone back, right? Instead, you come in there and you say, oh, okay, it looks like you've been busy. <laughs> you know what I love about you, sweetheart, is you are clean. You are clean. The Bible says, call those things that are not as though they are, right? And, and it also says, as a person think it, they become. So how about helping them think that they're clean? And then they start becoming clean, right? I know they started working with my daughter. I just said, you know, I, I love how you, you, you clean your room. You're really good at it. I know you've been busy, so I'm not, I'm not upset. Um, but when you clean your room, you do it in such a great way. I can see the creativeness in the way you put things where they go. It's really good, sweetie. I love you. She's like, Dad, I'm going to clean my room. I go, oh, okay. Awesome. And I come back in a little bit. It's spotless. I'm like, whoa, what happened in here? All of heaven broke out. If everything's <laughs> you guys are getting this though. This is a powerful truth. And and so there's glory on that. You know the truth. There's glory. And so yeah. Amen. What's the scripture? It's in first Kings and also Second Chronicles. First Kings. And they're both the same prayers basically. So that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house Ooh. of the Lord. Can you imagine so much glory in the church that they can't even minister? And it's not because of big screen smoke machines and skinny jeans. It's because 
Jesus showed up. And the Shekinah glory was so strong. It was so powerful. There was a move of God and nobody could even talk because it was too good. And you don't want to mess it up. Man, the lights are flickering. I don't know how many glory of God's in here. Oh, I feel the glory. What's the, well, did you get to the other one? Or did you just read the one? Oh, that was the, okay. Good job. Thank you. Great scripture. Okay, right here in the front row and then we'll go back there. Psalms 84, 11 says, For the Lord God is brighter than the brilliance of a sunrise, wrapping himself around me like a shield. He is so generous with his gift of grace and glory. Those who walk along his path with integrity will never lack one thing they need, for he provides it all. I love that. Did you guys hear that scripture? What was the, the reference again, the address? What is it? Yeah, Psalms 84, 11. That was Psalms 84, 11. You all should memorize that one because it's powerful. I'm not, uh, the reason I had you say it is so the people on there. Can you put that in the feed there, comment, and put that in the feed, uh, the reference again one more time? Psalm 84, 11. That was Psalm 84, 11. If you want to type it in the feed, that would be great. You don't have to do it, brother. Let them do it. That's, that way you don't bounce them off there. Go ahead. Uh, no, back here and then Ina. Okay, yeah. Reference again. Corinthians 4, 7. That was 2 Corinthians 4, 7. Powerful scripture. I love that. Yeah, yeah 4, 6 is good too. I had that written down. And, and now, you know what's so cool, by the way, sister, is that I had uh, 2, Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 6 written down. And you just read uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 7, which was so the one that I missed and it wasn't the right one. You had the right one. And guys, that, the reason that's so significant to me is because we are the body of Christ. I'm really kind of tired of just listening to ministers, minister, like that's the man of God. Listen, you are a man of God. You are a woman of God. You know, and he wants the body, I mean, the church to be a part of the gathering. And so I love to interact with you. And so if you're called and you're going to come up here and minister, I'll be in the nations. When I go to the nations, God sends the nations to us. And I've been blazing a trail for a little while going for God. And some of you ministers, you've been stepping up and, and leading in my, when I'm gone. And it's a great thing. And I love the rotating pulpit idea. And so I hear some of you minister and obviously, you know, you're called, you have a powerful anointing and you're going to be ministering incredible in the nations of the earth. You're not just going to minister here, but in the nations of the earth. And the ministry is going to be very impactful. And one of the things you're going to talk about is the glory of God. So this, this is such a good topic for your spirit. And Kim, you're going to minister in the nations too. I'm glad you showed up, by the way. I haven't seen you for a little while. Kim, you're going to minister all over the place. And, and maybe right now it's a little bit crazy. You might want to wait until they fix some of the stuff with the airplanes. But I believe that Jesus is going to send you strategically with a team to go and release revival into the nations that, that need the water. That they're in a dry place and they need the water. God will use you to bring what only He can bring through you. Unique gift to bring His grace in, into that. So there was somebody else. Who, who was it? Yeah, Enam. Okay, go ahead. So um, Habakkuk. Habakkuk. 214. Oh, I love that. I have that written down at the end. That's the last one. Go ahead. Oh, the earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. You know when the glory intensifies, when the evil gets darker, the light shines brighter, so the, the, the world, when it gets darker, deep darkness covers you. But remember this, that actually causes the light to shine brighter. Don't be discouraged by what you see in the earth. Get ready and get excited. God's going to use you. And practice allowing the Holy Spirit to develop you as you learn to step out more and more. And speak truth and love and teach fear. It's not your teacher. The spirit of fear will try to snare you and keep you from presenting the gospel. If you're not actively telling people the gospel, the good news, then it's not news at all. It's only news if you proclaim it. You have to speak about it for it to be news. Do you know everywhere I go, I tell people about Jesus. Do you believe me? I mean, almost all the time. Like, almost to where if I'm with my wife and girls, I totally have to tone it down. Because they could get annoyed. I want them to know that they're more important than strangers. Right? 
But then they also know that my job is to shine. And I love God too much to not let people hear the truth wherever I go. So I speak truth, I speak yes. love, I prophesy, I pray for people everywhere. And it can annoy them at times. But they get it. I said, you guys are in this with me. You're making a sacrifice by releasing that to go minister to a, a few people. And they're like, I know that. Go ahead. And, but I always like to include him, especially if we're on a vacation trying to take a break. And I still want to do it because it's, <laughs> it's just who he is in me. Amen. So we should all be telling everybody about Jesus. Practice. Practice what you're going to say. Like, well, what do I say? Where do I start? Just, hey, Jesus really loves you. Why do you say that? Why me? Why are you talking to me? You know, you, you have to know what you're going to say when they do that. Amen? If you're full of the glory, it's way easier. I'll just walk up to somebody. I'll tap them. You know, sometimes I'll tap them. Hey. And they're like, yeah? What do you want? Right? I'm like, oh, I just wanted you to know Jesus loves you. He told me to tell you. I don't believe that. I'm an atheist. Well, praise God. I'm glad I chose you to talk to you. <laughs> right? I don't want to hear that. Get away from me. Okay, it's all good. I mean, I just want you to know Jesus loves you. He's amazing, by the way. He loves you. He's going he's gonna to show up in your life in a powerful way. You watch. And I'll start praying. Yeah, that's all. Give him Holy Ghost. <laughs> I release the glory of God. Pretty soon every Sunday. What is that? <laughs> I was driving down the street, no joke, five, and I was with my friend, Glenn. And, and I go, you see that guy right there? He's demonized. He's like, yeah. And the guy's like, kind of walking. He's kind of like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like this. And, and I go, I go, watch this. I'm just going to release the fire of God. He goes, what? I go, I'm going to release the fire of God. I go, I release the fire of God. And I'm buying every demonic spirit that's got a grip on that man's soul. And I command him to loosen and go. And Jesus said, fire of heaven. And I shouted it out in the car. And the guy goes, <laughs> like this. Right on the sidewalk. We watched it. He goes, Whoa! I go, yeah, isn't that amazing? We carry something tangible yeah. in the glory. Yeah. You got the power of the living God. Yeah. Resurrection yeah. power flowing through yeah. your veins. Amen? Yeah. Nothing's impossible! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gotta have a little fun with it. Have a little time like faith and unlock the wonder in other people by just operating from the Holy Spirit when the Spirit gives you the unction. You don't go around and just start going, fire, fire, fire. <laughs> 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 Lord, should we call fire down on them? You don't know what manner of spirit you're of. <laughs> yeah, you don't do it just to do it. You do it because the spirit engages you to do it. Amen? Amen. The big difference between wanting to just give everybody a prophetic word and the Lord saying, speak to this one right here. Speak to that one. Yeah. Go over here. No, come over here. No, sit. No, wait. No, don't speak to be heard. No, don't lay hands on that pretty girl. Leave her alone. Pervert. <laughs> Get out in Jesus' name. <laughs> wow. Wow. I just feel like the Lord's given me a word to hear to be my wife. Oh, you better watch out and run from that guy. Amen? <laughs> Especially if you're beautiful, you know. God will speak to you about who's supposed to be the one. Amen? If you don't speak to you, then don't buy into it. Amen? Nobody should tell you, well, God told me you're going to be my wife. That's witchcraft. It's control and it's rebellion. And it's demonic. And so don't, don't fall for that nonsense. But if you feel in your spirit that God spoke to you, and you didn't tell the person, and then they say that, then it could be the Lord. I was here in a prophetic meeting, I think it was like five years ago, and there was this couple here, and and... Well, no, I'm sorry. It wasn't, it wasn't a couple yet. It was a guy here, and there was a girl over here, and the Lord says, call this guy out. And so I call this guy out, and I go, hey, man. I go, here, stand up right there. And he goes, oh, okay, he stands up. I go, the Lord, show me you want a truck. Is it true you want a truck? He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to get a truck. And I go, oh, that's great. I release it in Jesus' name. And I saw the desire of his heart was to have a truck. And I looked over here, and I saw this lady, and all of a sudden I saw this lady in the spirit, and she joined with this man, and they were to be married. And I said, Oh, you are going to marry... Oh, I don't normally do this. They would tell you don't do this in prophetic training school. <laughs> don't ever prophesy about babies or marriages or things that can be very emotional. And especially if you're new at it because you might get it wrong, so don't do it. But anyway, I said, you are, you are supposed to be married to this one. And I wouldn't normally say that, but this is the, the prophetic conference. And you're, I feel like you're supposed to marry her. 
And he gets up and walks over and proposes, and they get married, <laughs> and they move to Colorado. They, they're married today. I found out they're still married, so it was a word from the Lord, and things were working out. But anyway, normally you would not do that. But in this case, it was really, really strong. So you can practice building your prophetic strength, but if you can get in the glory, loving on Jesus, oh Lord, and just, you can resist the devil by just pursuing God actively. Stay so engaged with heaven that you're just not going to miss it. You don't even want to miss it, right? You're so full of heaven. You're so full of the glory. The glory of God. The glory of God. So, praise God. The other thing is for finance. I'm going to I'm going to invite our team up in just a little bit, and we'll, we'll pray and prophesy over many of you that would like that. Um, but let's let's prepare our offering tonight, and let's sow into the glory. Amen? You can sow into the glory. I've learned to sow into the glory. If there's presence, if there's glory, uh, and you sow, you will actually see multiplication miracles for finance. I've seen it myself, so I know that it works. Um, I don't like to just... Randomly give, I always like to ask God what He wants me to give. And some people, some of you are actually learning how to give seed and see the results of the giving of seed. And so I'm going to pray. I'm just going to pray blessings over your finances. I know some of you are going to have extreme uh, financial breakthrough, and some of you need extreme financial breakthrough. But the breakthrough is when you're trusting God. We'll just give everybody an envelope and a pen. I probably should have done this earlier. Well, there was a lot more people here earlier, but I felt like the Lord said, wait till the end. So just know this. While you sow, speak over your seed. Speak over it. Say, Jesus, I'm going to trust you for such and such. Whatever it is, they're, they're believing for land. So they're sowing in. It could be, Lord, we're believing you for the property next door, and we're giving you this gift in exchange for that property. And I've seen this. Where you sow in, and then in faith, you, you believe God to do something supernatural. I don't know what you're believing for, but God knows. And when when it's offering time, it usually provokes things. If the heart's right, you get excited. If the heart's not right, you cringe. Oh no, they're asking for resources. God doesn't need anything from us. God doesn't need your money. He doesn't need my money. But He's after our heart. And this is how we destroy the works of the devil. If you want to destroy the works of the devil in your finances, then just learn to be get generous on every occasion. Uh, what happens is in the spirit realm, he takes what we bring, and he sees it, and he gets excited, and then he blesses it, and then he multiplies it back, presses it down, spills it over. He opens windows and doors. So your seed has a voice. Does anybody believe that your seed actually speaks to the Lord? Most of you don't know. Okay, so your, your seed has a voice. When you sow, you're saying, God, I trust you, right? You're saying, Lord, I'm, I'm giving to you whatever it is, this tithe, this tithe, or this offering, anything over and above the tithe is an offering. And you say, Lord, I trust you. And I'm not just saying I trust you, but I'm giving to this to you to prove that I do trust you. So it's not like you have to prove it all. It's proven. But what proves you actually have the faith is that you take the action. If you don't take the action, then you might have convinced yourself you are a person of faith. And you can't get rewarded without the action. And faith is a verb. So when you give, you are saying, God, I trust you. I don't want money to be my idol. I want you to truly be my Lord. And that's why we give. We don't give to help God. We actually give because it purifies our own heart. And we give to say, hey, I love you because you first gave to me. And I give back to you because I trust you to provide. And if you want to see supernatural resources, just learn to be generous on every occasion. Instead of going, well, I think I'll just do this. No, Lord. Everything I have is yours. How much of this resource that's yours would you like me to give you so that you can do something incredible through this work that I believe in? And then as you sow from the heart, God sees it, He smiles, and He commands a blessing, and you see increase. And so and go ahead and prepare your, your tithe, your offering. And if you're using a, a check, you just make it out to the rock. 
Uh, if you're using a credit card, you want to give by credit card. Uh, you just lift open the flap if you got an envelope. Did everybody get an envelope? Does anybody need an envelope? If you need an envelope, just wave your hand and our offertors will bring you one. Does anybody need a pen? Y'all have a pen? If you need a pen, just wave and they'll bring you one. Okay, everybody has what they need. Okay, so whenever you're ready, just sow your best and you can come to the altar. There's a basket up here. Just fill the basket with your love. And uh, if you're watching online, you want to get in on this offering, you can sow as well. You can do text to give. Uh, you can also give right online at the website. Take a pause and just go to the site and sow your best. And uh, I'm just going to pray a blessing over your offering. Lord, we just thank you right now yep. for unusual success to come upon every sower tonight. We're not going to eat our seed. We're going to sow our seed. And we're asking that as we sow, that you would bring increase. That's unusual. Supernatural increase upon this glorious offering. We're sowing into the glory. We're sowing into the presence. And we're trusting you. And we pray that our resource would be like little soldiers that run forward with the gospel message. That empower the generations to come to the knowledge of Christ and to the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name, God bless you and your finances as you give unto the Lord.
Yes, God. Holy Spirit.
rest of you, you're dismissed to go. We'll be back tomorrow morning. But don't miss this holy moment. Come and let us pray for you. Let us prophesy hope over you, life over you, peace over you, joy over you. If you need healing, come to the altar. Many of these people up here flow in the gift of healing, in the working of miracles. This is your moment. Come on up and receive the Lord. God bless you. Enjoy your night. We love you so much. And we'll see you again tomorrow morning right back here at 11.